went to our 20-week ultrasound. The ultrasound just seemed to be taking a little longer than previous ones, and so I thought it felt like maybe they found something. The diaphragm, which is a muscle that separates the chest from the abdomen, does not completely form. And uh, there's a hole in that muscle that over the course of development, because organs in the abdomen are growing much faster than those in the chest, they find room through that hole to take up space in the chest. Her stomach was up high in the chest. Her liver was like on both sides. And then her lungs were these two tiny slivers at the top. When we left the appointment that day, they gave us a book, A Gift of Time, Continuing Your Pregnancy When Your Baby's Life is Expected to be Brief. It really crystallized near what they expected to happen. They said it would just be moments that she was alive, but they would give her pain medicine and she would just pass in our arms. One of the unique things about being in a quaternary center like Texas Children's is that we see things that most people don't see or things that maybe people see one in their entire career, and we see a lot of them. And so that, I think, gives families a lot of assurance that if I can only get to Texas Children's, hopefully they'll be able to figure it out. On a Friday afternoon, I got a call that she said, there is this experimental procedure we have called the FIDO. The FIDO procedure um, entails the placement of a very small balloon in the baby's trachea. The mean duration of a balloon placement is about 15 minutes. We check by ultrasound at all times, not just that the baby is well positioned, but also that the baby is doing well, that the heart rate is um, okay, that the baby is tolerating well the intervention. As the lungs develop during pregnancy, fluid comes out of the lungs out into the amniotic fluid. And when there's a blockage for that egress of fluid, the fluid builds up and actually causes the lungs to grow. And so the thought was if we could let the lungs grow over the course of pregnancy, maybe we could take a very little tiny lung and grow it a little bit. That may give the child an opportunity to have something to keep them alive and keep them thriving while they have time to grow the lungs to a pretty decent size. I knew they did amazing things here at Texas Children's. I had no idea the details of fetal interventions. We wouldn't be surprised if we were the only patients that the Texas Children's team had because of the way we were treated, just so much attention. They went around to identify everybody and I counted in my head how many people were there and there were I think 19 people there. It felt like the greatest privilege in the world to be able to do this. At that point, the lungs were um, over 50% of the volume. So they had, the lungs had um, doubled or tripled in size. I started to realize that we wouldn't necessarily have to be preparing to, to bury our little baby. We'd be able to hold her and be with her for a while. When the balloon was placed, I was 28 weeks, and she had this severe hernia with really small lungs. The plan was that if the baby went into distress, they were not going to deliver her to save her. Um, and when the balloon was removed, we, for the first time in our pregnancy, had what was considered a viable baby. And so, um, if anything happened when the, they were removing the balloon, they were actually going to deliver her. And so I remember when they were getting ready, I remember Dr. Belfort saying, is Neo here? Because the NICU team had to be there and had to be ready to take her. And it was like, that just hit me that we have a baby to save now. She came out, the first thing I, I noticed was she had a big frown on her face and she looked just like our son Colton. She did she, cry. There was a little bit of a squeak. I, it wasn't much, but it was, yeah. there was something. They came over and they handed her to me and I held her for, I don't know, maybe two minutes. And we took a whole bunch of pictures and I had no idea that I was gonna get to hold her before they left. 
I remember after the surgery when we were talking to Dr. O, Dr. Olatoye, about how she did and the next steps, he made a comment about, um, we'll follow her until she goes to college. And I, she was three days old, and I thought, like, you think she's going to go to college? <laughs> um, and we had so much respect for Dr. O, I thought, well, if he thinks <laughs> she's got a shot at college, <laughs> then that must mean things are going okay. I had no idea that the NICU knew all about her before she was born. I had no idea her pulmonologist that we still see today knew about her before we knew him. The nurses knew a bilateral CDH baby was coming. The neonatologist knew, the pulmonologist knew. They knew, they all knew. And it had just never occurred to me that so many people cared and um, weren't giving up on her. For you to have the kind of outcomes that we have here at Texas Children's that we strive to keep be getting better with. You need to have a very comprehensive team where they're experts in all the different aspects. We felt like all along she was cared for by the best of the best. For us, the Fido was our miracle. And I just, I hope that one day there is something like that for every family and every baby. Sometimes we look back at pictures of her when she was in the NICU and just wonder how we, how we did it. People come from all over the world to be treated here and they came to us. They didn't have to do it, but they wanted to try. When I stop and think about every step and everything that happened, it's just unbelievable.